Welcome to I'm Spiritual Dammit. I'm your host, Jennifer Weigel, and joining me in studio, math genius Mike Beister, founder of Brain Addicts, and oh my gosh, recent participant in Superhuman. <laughs> How you doing? I am great, Jennifer. <laughs> it's so great to be here. Thank you for asking me. Oh, thanks for coming. So, okay, what the heck? We've met, gosh, years ago when we were talking and I had heard about you and someone had sent me the clip of you on 2020. Mm. And um, and I was just so impressed by what you did. And I saw you on Windy City Live. And you're helping people understand that the brain is unbelievably malleable and can absorb a whole lot more than we think. Right. Absolutely. And uh, I, I focus on kids, but usually, I mean... 40% of the people that like you have learned brain addicts are adults because everyone, the brain is your most important asset. It, it gets you the best grades in school when you're a kid. It gets mm-hmm. you the best jobs when you're an adult and keeps you young and vibrant when you're old. So it's, it's the one muscle that people have to use forever. And, you know, I, the only reason why uh, I've been able to have a good impact is I, I think I do everything I do is a game or mm-hmm. something fun or because people don't want to do drudgery or boring stuff. And so I try to make car tricks and different things that you use your mind to do. And, you know, it's been out of control. Great. So when you started on this journey as a kid, yeah. it started for you with memorizing the presidents. Is that right? Yes. When I was just a little kid, I did it actually wrote memorization. I didn't really have a plan. And then <laughs> after, you know, it was like a pain in the butt. And because my uncle who lived right above us mm-hmm. used to you know, show show me off to all my friends, and he didn't even believe I memorized them because he always asked me who the third president was. <laughs> you know, every do you time still know friend. them? Do you still know them all? I know them all. Oh yeah. my yeah. gosh! Yeah. Well, it gets a little harder every year. I was going to say every year a little harder. I know. Every year. I mean, it's mm-hmm. it's funny because I I mean, uh, but now I do it in a way where I do five at a time. Each each sentence I've made up in my mind has five presidents in it. Like George and Jeff made money. George is George Washington. Ann is John Adams. Jeff is Thomas Jefferson. Made is James Madison. Money, James Monroe. And I just memorized nine simple sentences, right. and I have the president. And I do that with everything, you know, just m- mnemonic tables. And, mm-hmm. you know, so it's really easy to do. The problem is uh, people never do it, and they never learn how. And so when I, when I go to schools, I go to schools for free every single day. I teach the kids in a really fun and cool way how to memorize anything, how to focus. All these skills are vitally important, Mm -hmm. and they're never taught in schools ever to any kid. And, you know, there's videos all over the place of of me working with kids, like like in 2020 and other Mm -hmm. things. But if you go to, like, MikeBeisterKids.com, you could watch video after video of average kids doing unbelievable things because once we tap into it Mm -hmm. it changes lives and it changes every kid's lives it's so important do you think that a lot of the reason that kids have anxiety and there's some depression and there's all this stuff going on is a lot of it is bullying and they're not feeling like they can do anything well right absolutely and the the people that have learned the stuff that i teach they say the number one change in their kids is confidence and it really is important because i always say that the kids that are not great athletes might have trouble with their self-esteem 30 minutes a day, three days a week during gym. Mm-hmm. The kids that struggle in school have low self-esteem, six hours a day, five days a week, two hours a night doing homework, whatever it is. It and those ends. kids, and yeah. they always feel bad about themselves. Yeah. And that's something I, I want to change, and I don't know if it's going to be one person thing or a whole group of people, but I, I want to have impact on every kid i really really do and so listening what, if someone's listening right there and they can't get you to come to their school obviously they can go on brainetics or they can go on mikebeisterkids.com right, right. but what's something that they can do like in the car right now right now any sort of game that you play there's a lot of different things you do i mean my son and i were like dorks with a capital d because we we love to work our brain so one of the things we'll do is we'll have conversations like for like 20 minutes where neither of us uses the letter e in any word and then how can you do that we, <laughs> what did you uh do for lunch today Miss W, I can't. Yeah, even see, there you go. Right. Good, but without the right. E. But, you know, it really right. makes you. I mean, stuff like that it is, makes you stop and think. Begin. It makes you think. It makes mm-hmm. your brain just work like a thesaurus. But we have so much fun with it because we know <laughs> that it's almost like mental exercise, and it really helps because that's when people see what I could do, they they freak out. But all it is is my brain is just processing information a little faster than everyone else, mm-hmm. and so and. It is a learned trait. That's the whole thing. People think I'm smart or I'm not smart. There's you started working ability, your brain. But there yeah. is 
a way to make every kid or adult much, much, much smarter. It's just the things that are important. They don't never learn. You, uh, you and your son started a game, and this is something that was in the 2020, where you came up with, is it a different letter every day? No, a like different the, number. Different you, number. Okay, that was well, it. Okay. okay, one day, we're, you know, this was like 10 years ago, but okay. one day we're driving home, and he goes, Dad, what is this? You know, he was at tennis lesson. He goes, Dad, what's this number? 120507. I said, Josh, I think it's the expiration date of the water bottle, December uh, 5th, 07. Mm -hmm. I said, I said, you know what? And I thought this was a perfect opportunity if he's in second grade. I said, Josh, remember 120507. So he goes, okay. One two five seven. I said, Josh, when you wake up tomorrow, I'm going to ask you what that number is. So he goes, okay. So the next day he wakes up, he goes, I go, what's the number? He goes, one two zero five zero seven. And I said, let's add a three to it. And then the next day it's an a eight, nine, then or a whatever. nine, then mm -hmm. a four. So one two zero five zero seven three eight nine four. He still remembers like a hundred of the two hundred digits. I don't. Wow. But he, no. But what was so important about that? Of course, twenty twenty happened to come on right after we finished the number. So you know he got to do it on national TV. But what was so important about that is because he could memorize a 200-digit number like that when he's seven years old, he realized that he could mem he could do these things. I mean, you know, it's like 30 Spanish words doesn't bother him because he knows. Knowing that you can memorize a 200-digit number proves to yourself how powerful the brain is. That's what a lot of kids have to learn, that mm -hmm. they could do it. And because so many people, when they get an assignment, say, I can't do this. There's mm -hmm. no way. I guarantee almost every assignment in school you could do because your brain is so much more powerful than you realize that you just have to learn how to use it. So they say that for the regular folk, we're using about 5% of our brain Absolutely. on a good day. You're, I'm guessing, in the 15th percentile <laughs> at least, know. wouldn't I, you say? I have no idea what's going <laughs> no. on up there. You don't want to know what goes on up there. I cannot. I mean, it's like, oh, my gosh. Do you is. believe in intuition, uh, the the other side of the brain, so to speak? I, yeah. I mean, I, I just believe so many. You know, I never, because when people see what I can do, they sort of freak out. So I never put it past anyone that they can't do amazing things. Right. I mean, the people I was on in Superhuman, they, they were Freaking me out. All right, I mean, tell me some stories that we didn't see on the show. And for okay, anyone who didn't okay, see the well, show, right, yeah, yeah, listen. Yeah, and it's available online. You can stream it. Yep. Um, it was on. So, what was really cool? What was, first of all, there were, I hope I can say these things. You know, we had the confidential, and now the show's over. Right. There were six people on the show, and they only left five on because it was a cut in case someone, you know, wasn't really good. And the guy that didn't, didn't make, make the, the cut? cut was like the coolest guy in the world because. He had the world's best eyesight. And so Whoa. he had like 24 vision. You know, uh -huh. like the average person could see four feet away. He could see 20. And so, and he, you know, my son was out there with me and he, he befriended my son and was mm -hmm. wonderful. And so, um, you know, so his challenge was he... If you ever if you ever looked at ever see the show Modern Family where you're looking a picture within a picture within sure, a picture, sure. so he had this like picture within a picture within a picture, and there's like like a little postage stamp on inside the third picture, and he's standing all the way back behind all the audience members. I didn't see it; my son was telling me, uh -huh. and he had to tell a, a little number in the in the third picture. No one could see it, and so even though he got it right every time, he said number seven. The audience couldn't see it, so even though though the host Cal Penn said you're right. You know, right. no one really Nobody knew. Nobody knew. So, no right. one knew. So I think that was the didn't reason why didn't translate as well. On mm -hmm. Because it was so good. But what made it so cool, this is the coolest part. Uh, after, I felt so bad because he was in the Army and he, he got leave and, you know, he told everyone he was going on and then he didn't make the final cut. So, you know, if, right. I felt bad for the guy. And so, you know, he, we, we, we were on the same plane together on the way out. So mm -hmm. I said, you know, let's go to the airport together. Let me at least take you to lunch. I felt bad. So he didn't win. And so, and he's such a nice guy. His name is Jason. And so we're in the airport together. We're in LAX. And I don't know if that much way around. And my son, Jason and I are walking around and eat. Uh, and I go, gosh, let's grab a place to eat. You know? And he, I go, well, you know, I think there's a restaurant down there. Yeah. A lot of people walk around. I go, yeah, but you want to walk all the way? I go, I wonder what they have. There's chicken parmesan. He's reading the, the menu, menu across the LAX. I said, I didn't even know that was a restaurant. And he's reading what's going on. He said, so <laughs> it was freaking me out. I said, you know, I told you, I said, I don't care, you know, superhuman. This guy is Superman. You know what I mean? That's so. With the x-ray vision. So, so the x-ray vision, this right. brings up an interesting point. Like, what the heck is going on? Like in your brain with ne the numbers, and, and for those who didn't watch, I'll just give one example. They listed off all the attributes of a car, 
Right. And which the, you had the prices of, and he was saying them at lightning speed. The fastest talker in the world. The fastest talker in the world was listing off all, yeah. the, all the different parts of a car, and then you, and then, oh, by the way, you get 10% off for this, and, da, 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 and then you had to come up with the sticker price right, right. after those were listed off by the fastest talker in the world. Right. And you nailed it. Uh, you know what? The whole thing is it's, it's concentration and focus. People, like, I know I'm on a podcast, so you can't see, but when I, when I think I, I close my eyes and just focus on the word, and right. so many things, if your mind is totally concentrating on one thing, mm-hmm. not having any distractions, you can accomplish so much more. And that's what I've trained my mind to do. And so when I work with kids, that's all we do is train the brain to work in a way where you, you get the most out of it. Right. And so, you know, it's the math was a, was not that difficult. It was people were freaking out how fast he was going. But if all you're doing is not paying attention to how fast he's going and just listening, listening for to the numbers, numbers mm-hmm. and is it a plus or a minus or a mm-hmm. multiplied or whatever it is, mm-hmm. it was not that hard. But I could not do it with – if I, my eyes were open, I'm looking at, wow, there's someone in the audience saying, no, right. you know, I, I'm dead. Right. So, you know, so that, that's, that's what I try to do. It's all mm-hmm. about the focus. Who else did you meet that impressed you other than the man I mean, who could read the a, menu across oh, LAX? There was, a, yeah, there was <laughs> a, a girl that made the finals with me. Uh-huh. And, uh, I mean, she was, like, pretty amazing, too. Like, uh, you know, she walks into a room, and if there's one thing out of place, then she could tell exactly, you know, what's been moved. And it was really, it's an amazing ability. Mm -hmm. But, you know, and I felt really funny about that because, you know, it was was interesting because – I mean, I ended up, I was lucky I ended up winning winning that week, but she was on the finals with me, and she uh, was a single mom that Mm -hmm. was in the Army for 12 years, raising a daughter by herself, and here I am, middle-aged man with a son, and, you know, and I really was surprised because I really thought that uh, you thought she should have won yeah, over you won. well I, th- I oh. know she should have won but it was a way that it was interesting to me because uh, it, it proved that you know the audience was not looking at maybe who the person was and what they've done they it was were honestly looking at the talent mm-hmm. and I don't know if I had a better talent with her but she definitely had a better you know story, she had a better backstory right, but backstory. I'm sorry the 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 impressiveness of what you do versus I mean, I think that could be OCD, <laughs> what she has. It's not Absolutely. the same, right. really. Yeah. I mean, no. we have a family friend, and the joke was is that you could walk into a room and you could move the wine bottle over two inches and turn the label the other way and then walk away, and he would come in, and he would put the wine yeah. bottle exactly back where it was and turn the label really? back. Oh, my God, And I, we would just joke that he's OC, you know, right. OCD. Right, Absolutely. We wouldn't yeah. see him on Superhuman. Right, right. <laughs> I know, but it's, it's funny because people, I mean – I, there's a friend of mine, uh, I, you might have heard of him or not, it's like, uh, it's embarrassing that he's a friend of mine, but his name's Mr. Skin. Mm-hmm. I played oh, hockey sure. with him. And yeah. I, you know, he's and, got this gift of knowing, knowing what every movie naked body, scene right, is. Na- yeah. naked. Mm-hmm. And <laughs> when we were, tr- we, we used to play hockey together for years and years, and everyone thought he had like this silly talent. I said, you know, you have an amazing brain, and you use it. You use this talent because people don't use I mean, so many people are superhuman, mm-hmm. and they don't realize it. And all – I never would have done this thing talking to kids if it wasn't for my cousin asking me to go to, you know, her her school and talk to her high school math class. And the right. kids loved it. They thought it was so cool, and I started teaching them. And to my amazement, they were able to do the things I was doing. I thought it was all me. It wasn't me. It's the way I do it. It was like yay right. and not yay. <laughs> you know, it made me less special, but mm-hmm. also showed that I could teach it. It's the way I do things, not who I am. And superhuman, that's such a good point, that we all have superhuman qualities that we just don't even know that we have, and we, yeah. we don't honor them with an award or being on a show, but they're right. amazing. Like I have this weird Lindsay Wagner, <laughs> and I'm totally dating myself with that reference of the bionic right. woman, yeah, but sure. I mean, I can hear in a restaurant... I can hear the conversation going on four tables over. Wow, that's amazing. And it's distracting as heck. Right. Because I'll be trying to talk to the person who's with me, and I'm listening to this couple fighting, and I'm like, ah, shut it off. Right. Right. Like, I don't know how to work with it, but right. it's but it also comes in handy. Like, when I was a, a reporter, <laughs> right. and I'm trying to decide who to go to interview, I would be like, oh, wait, hold on. Let me see what they're up to over there. <laughs> and then I could, oh, right. I need to ask them some questions. Absolutely. Now, have I ever been on a show for this? No. Have I ever been tested by right. a company? Right. No. Right. But it's come in handy. Andy, and I'm sure there are so many people that are listening, like um, their unusual gifts. I had one friend who had this magical gift 
of being able to parallel park. Well, now cars will park right, for you. Right. But with one hand and like never taking her foot right. off of the, you know, accelerator. It was just like, right. <laughs> <laughs> scared the crap out of me in high school. <laughs> but she never bumped a car. Right. I mean, how did that happen? I know. I, mean, I don't know. I'm saying. People are so powerful. And all of this <laughs> is showing showing the person what they could do. And, right. you know, and, and they, I think uh, what well, 2020, they, the thing that they were so impressed about with me was they called me like the anti-genius because even though I could do these things with my mind and, you know, all these crazy things, I'm someone that is very approachable and I really want to help people. And I don't, you know, I, you know, it's like every day I do a show at a different school. And when I'm done with the show, you know, because I, 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 I teach kids how to focus, concentrate, memorize all in really fun, cool ways. Mm -hmm. I just touch on a little thing with each kid, with the, which with each of those abilities, and then I'll I'll, I'll uh, tell parents, look, if you want to meet for a cup of coffee, I'll do it for free. I'll do mm -hmm. you know, and I I have thousands of parents I meet with every year for free because every kid has their own issues, right. and so I really want. I want to impact the lives of every kid, not just to touch on them. So when the parents and I meet, we'll talk for a half hour just about their kid and what, what things you could do if he has memory issues or he has no confidence or different things that he could do in school or homework-wise that could mm -hmm. really help him. And that's that's what's really important to me. It's the one-on-one -on -one mm -hmm. contact and knowing that I'm making a difference. It's hard to describe some of the exercises that you teach because a lot of it is so visual. Uh -huh. Is there something that audiently people could listen to right now when they're in their cars and that they can incorporate when they get home and not have to see visually that you could give them? I mean one of the one of the best exercises exercises I do and I don't know if why it is but my my biggest thing to people is to to in your mind to, to think creatively and in your mind to switch around things and so if you give me a, a word like uh, you know like Jennifer mm -hmm. uh, you know, even though it's you, you spelled differently than most people, it, uh, it's <laughs> I'm glad J -E, that right, you noticed. Right, yes, two F's. J, J E N N I F F E R. Uh -huh. As fast as you could spell it that way, I could spell it E E F F I J N R J J N N R and put the letters in alphabetical order. And that's what it. Yeah, that's what. So that's take what a word and put where, the words in uh, yeah, letters in alphabetical order. Right, and that's mm -hmm. what it is. It's training your mind mm -hmm. to see it, see something in your head, and then switch it around. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, don't start out with a long word like Jennifer, but just like a five-letter word like Klein, B-C-I-L-M, because mm -hmm. it, it trains your brain not mm -hmm. to just look at things, but look at things and, and play with it a little. Because I always think that people, no matter what their business is or what, what they do in life, if you just, this is the way I run my business, but I always look at it when I go into any restaurant, any shoe store, any bookstore, whatever it is, mm -hmm. I'll say, wow, if they did this, this, and this, they could probably be more successful. And everyone just looks at it, whatever it is it is, I look at it like, look at look at everything and then switch it around. And sure. what if you did this, this, and this? Or what if you did this first instead of that first? Mm -hmm. And, you know, if you tried and it doesn't work, you could go back. Right. And there's so many people that just, just leave things status quo and you can't. What other gifts impress you? Because your gift impressed so many. But what other superhuman tricks uh, well, impressed I, you? I, what really impresses me is, uh, <laughs> I'll, I'll tell you, the people that could look at a problem and and solve it in unique and cool ways. You mean like I a mean, math problem? No, anything. No. It's like um, I was, uh, I mean, j just people that, uh, I don't know, it's like there's, there's this guy I... I used to, I mean, just little things because uh, that, that, I mean, I love people that think outside the box and think creatively. And there was this guy that I used to work with. He did a couple things, but everyone looked at him as, you know, okay, not the brightest, you know. Right. And, you know, and he came up to me one day, he goes, and this is way back in the mid-90s. And he said, Mike, he goes, you know, it's hard. I, you know, everyone says I'm dumb. I'm really not that dumb. His name was Jeff. He was a super mm -hmm. nice guy. And he goes, I just want, you know, I just want to prove it to you. He goes, go on the internet, which was a pretty new thing. Right. And he said, just uh, take out any episode of The Simpsons. You know, they have the scripts on the internet. Print it out, and there were like 80 or 100 shows at the time. Print it out and come back to me and start reading it to me. And so literally pick any page you want. And so <laughs> go on. I picked this page, and it goes like, Bart says blah, 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 and Homer says blah, blah, blah. Then he started reading line after line after line. He knew like the rest the, of the episode. Right after that. And wow. Like, and, no one, and that's what I'm saying is so many people, when there's the passion, so anyone that's passionate about 
anything mm -hmm. is so amazing what they do. And the only reason why I'm able to help so many kids is because I make learning fun. So it's not like they're going to go home and do all this drudgery and teach them card tricks games, different things they could do that are fun to train the mind. Mm -hmm. And that's what I'm saying. So I always think that anyone that has a talent, don't just say, oh, there's nothing I can do with it. You could really make your mind do whatever whatever you want and mm -hmm. you know but just i always say try to do something you love in life you know do what you love the money will sure, follow sure yeah and because when you're passionate about something you'll do it well and you'll do it great right and you know and people will take notice that's so interesting about memorizing because i have some cousins who know every line to every john Hughes <laughs> movie and you know you just kind of go well how does that translate into a living you know right. it's, it makes you a really fun conversationalist right. and but, if you watch but, the movie but then you kind of go well so it's it's taking a passion but that you can find in the world right. as well not just what you do right. at home on and the couch the, you know and i always think that people will take the job that is the most money at first or something they mm -hmm. hate it's drudgery sometimes. You, you have so much advancement if you're doing something you love because you'll go home and you'll think about it and mm -hmm. you'll, you'll work harder and you'll make it better. And, you know, so it's really important. People don't realize how, you know, my, my son is like a computer genius. And, you know, he does, he invents apps. He does all these things before college. And, you know, and because he's going into major he loves, I know he's going to be successful. And he's of course. doing, you know, what he, you know, and so many people are just going to do, what the most money is and it's sometimes it's hard because you have to do something you really enjoy because I promise you you'll have the most success in the long run and also to the value of a good card game I mean you yeah. have showed me you know unbelievable I just taught my son gin rummy oh my gosh actually great. yeah and it's so fun because at first he was like wait a minute he didn't have the poker mindset right. of knowing that four of a kind are like this and right. if you have a flush they have to be all the same right. suit and he just didn't understand it because he had a two three four five he had he basically had a straight but not a straight flush right. but in gin rummy that's not enough Option. Right, so I was trying to teach him all the rules of poker, and I was making it way more complicated than it needed to be. Right, so right. I was like, wait a second. Gin Rummy is this, a group of four and a group of three. Right. If you have all the same number, then they're obviously different suits. Right. But if you have a, something in a row, right. they have to have the same suit. Right. And Absolutely. then that was the end of it. I didn't right. have to explain, like, that the ace is the highest and this, you know, all these other things with double whammy full house blah 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 that right. wasn't an option right right absolutely that's what i'm saying and i think cards is one of the few things that so many people overlook because that's one of the things that i learned as a young person looking you know doing things logically and sure. you know and gin rummy is a great game because it shows you you know you have to remember what cards have been played and really to be a good player you try mm -hmm. to really think and not just play the game you know i it sounds bad when i say it but play it to win play it well and mm -hmm. your mind will be much sharper sure I mean, you know we do you know we do so many fun things like i do the thing like um you know uh, your son's birthday what is it april 14th 2006 and that was a friday it was. It was Good <laughs> Friday. Yeah, Good Friday. It was oh a very gosh. good Friday. Oh, yes, yeah, Although it wasn't, wasn't a good labor, but boy. Absolutely. Tax day the next day. Oh, my gosh. Oh, yeah. yeah but and it was thing. Easter weekend and all that stuff, <laughs> right. so it was like the backup staff at the hospital. Oh, I digress. <laughs> but that's what I'm saying is so, you know, stuff like that. We try to teach kids in really fun and cool ways to mm -hmm. learn things that strengthen your mind. Like So when they go home and they start telling everyone the day of the week they're born or this or that. How did you know that from April 14th, 2006, that was a Friday? There's a, there's a, real there's a lot of codes, yeah, I know. A, and it's not really that difficult. Okay. Okay. Do you want me to go through it? Yes, please. Okay. There, each number, I mean, this is so people, if you have a pencil and paper handy, it yeah. might not, the math is not that hard. It's okay. just... The things I, the things I like to do is I like to teach things in step one, step two, step three, step four, because it trains your brain to do to be sure. in order. Yes. And each number, uh, like so April 04, 4, 04, 06, oh, it, it starts uh, every every 28 years, there's a new code. Uh -huh. So starting in 1984, there was a new code. So your son is in the 22nd year of the new code. After 84, okay. it's 22. Okay. To 06. Okay. Okay. 22 is what we start out with. That's our number. Okay. The math won't be hard, I promise you. Okay. And then you do 22 divided by 4. Okay. That's Got 5. five yeah. Don't worry about the remainder. Okay. So 22 plus the 5 is 27. Okay. Okay. Uh -huh. Are we good so far? Yeah, totally. Okay. April is a free month. There's a, there's a free a small, month? Yeah, so there's a zero. Okay. There's a, every, the only thing you have to memorize is the code of each month uh -huh. and it's a really simple way i don't won't, won't go into it but april is a zero code so mm -hmm. 22 plus 5 is 27 mm -hmm. plus zero is 27 mm -hmm. and then the date 
and he was born on the 14th. Mm -hmm. 27 plus 14 uh -huh. is 41. Got it. Okay, that's all you have to do. Now, if you divide 41 by 7, uh -huh. you get 5. Yep. Remainder 6. Interesting. About 5 remainder 6. Okay. And then we talk about the remainder. Yeah. 1 is Sunday, 2 is Monday, 3 is Tuesday, 4 is Wednesday, 5 is Thursday, 6 is Friday. He was born oh, on my gosh. And but you discovered this by I, I what? Developed, I saw someone do it on Johnny Carson. He said there's a code, so I broke down the code. Oh, and then, yeah, but that's what course. I do. But what I'm saying is the math isn't really that hard because I don't really care about the math part. Right. What I'm trying to do is get your mind to work. Step mm -hmm. one, step two, step right. three, step four, step five. Because once you do this, you start... You, you, your your mind starts working in order. Mm -hmm. Once once it does that, it becomes more, much more powerful and works more efficient. And what's the? I remember the uh, license plate, or sorry, the license number, driver's license number, right. code. You came up with that code. How? Uh, it's funny because when my I when I got my first license when I was sixteen, I looked and I said, "Wow, this this code is really cool." There's my year, and if I did this, it was my date. And then I I did it with my dad, and it worked. I was so excited. And then I did it with my mom, and it didn't work and I was like oh man and then I realized wait a second there's a different code for men and women and so, it's like a 600 hey, number I was 16 yeah. before you mean there's a difference between men and women that's cool <laughs> <laughs> it's a little so, slow in my family yes so. <laughs> all right so I know my driver's license less okay. because I wrote it okay. so many times on checks in okay. college so the last three are 885 uh, October 6th <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, yeah. But that only works for Illinois. And okay. every, there's four or five states that they have codes that work in the other ones. But that's what I'm saying is when I teach the kids this, that's what I'm looking to do is try to teach them things that are fun. Because if you teach a kid something mm -hmm. boring, it ends right there. But totally. if you teach them something fun and cool, they're going to go home and they're going to use it. And they, so when I'll, I'll teach them like 20 different fun and cool things, whatever you want to do, you know, and here are the steps and here it is. And so, you know, that's why it changes so many kids' lives. And when you look at me, it's no big deal. But if you go on or you Google me or look on Mike Beister Kids or Mike Beister, mm -hmm. wherever it is, then there's Mike Beister. You know, we're, we're on a mission now to change the life of every kid. I really do mean, mean that. and I want There aren't to, enough of you to go around right? well, with all the is, schools well, that know, need you. Yeah, I know. But my thing is I want to get... I, I spent the last couple of years developing a program just for schools. Mm -hmm. And I, because even though Brainetics has impacted the lives of hundreds of thousands of kids, it's the kids that probably don't need it as much that are impacting mm -hmm. because their parents are the ones that are motivated. And I want my kids right. to get the best. And they're buying the stuff and right. they're, they're going out and they're using it. And they're, you know, and they're, and so. You're making but, them sit down and watch the right, DVDs. And we'll, the yeah, DVDs mm -hmm. with them. This right. is the family thing. They're the motivated mm -hmm. learning family. And so I, I always was feeling guilty that I was, even though I'm trying to help kids, I may be widening the mm -hmm. difference between the, the haves and the have-nots. Right. And so so my thing this year is I worked the last couple of years developing a program just for schools, and I'm looking to partner with any major corporation. We've, we've heard from a lot of them in the first couple of weeks. I was going to say, where, what the heck? Right? You and know, Citibank or where are you guys? It, I want to keep it, you know, where, where it's accessible to every student, every mm -hmm. teacher, and, you know, you know, because that's what I'm saying is that if – and I don't want to change curriculum because that's silly to try to force things. Mm -hmm. But if if a teacher and their kids did it a half hour a week for two or three months, mm -hmm. every kid would be so far off the charts. We don't take kids from A to B. We take them from A to Z. Right. And like I said, when 2020 and all these videos come out of what kids could do, everyone wants to know, why can't my kid do that? And they can. You just mm -hmm. have to practice a little. And I don't want people to have to buy something to do it. Mm -hmm. I want it to be available to schools. And t uh, the funny thing is, is, you know, even though, you know, if you try to make it part of curriculum, it becomes, you know, the thing that bothered me about 2020, we got 50,000 emails from 2020, way more than any, any story they've ever run. They, they told me it was by far blew, blew, blew everything away. Right. We got it from thousands of parents, teachers, uh, administrators, uh, you know, everyone, and we got all these foreign countries. We got letters from like 30 some foreign countries. We didn't get one letter from a politician, uh, <sighs> senator, congressman. You to know, help governor. change I mean, the curriculum. Uh, yeah. You know, we had Barack Obama, who was uh -huh. senator of Illinois at the time. We didn't hear from him. We didn't hear from mayor. We didn't hear from anyone. And I said, you know what? I'm going to do this privately. And even though I've impacted so many kids with, with the product, it didn't impact the right kids, in my opinion. Even though I love it, I'm right. award winning and I, yes. I'm thrilled, but I have so many. I see these kids when I go in the inner city of Chicago that I could help these kids just give me a chance. And that's what I'm saying is I know they can't afford this. Let's make it free and mm -hmm. let's get the companies out there and we'll, we'll put it together in 
no time, everything's down. All we have to do is what's the best way to get this into every school. And so, you know, it's just basically a plea now because, mm-hmm. like I said, we've done the the finance part of it. Now let's change the lives of every kid. And if anybody's listening that can get that done, you know, do your part right now and right. step up and go to MikeBeister.com, MikeBeisterKids.com, BrainEdics.com, right. and reach out. And right. And that'll yeah, happen. Yeah, we're not looking for financial. We're just looking – send this to every uh, – politician every corporation anyone mm-hmm. from the media let let the world hear about it because my thing is who's going to say no i mean right. you know, no one's going to say well we don't want our kid to be smart you know yes of course it, you it's do not like, it's, and the way the way you know it's not like we have kids for one year we have kids from kindergarten to senior in high school that's 13 years five days a week you know whatever 170 80 days a year mm-hmm. do we not have time to Spend a half hour a week for two months to teach them how to memorize anything. Right. So every test, every they be, they do becomes much easier. And that's the other thing. One of the teachers that my son struggled with was somebody who only cared about the numbers, and so he would get anxious before a test, and then the numbers would get lower and lower and lower. Right. And so these teachers are anxious because they have to raise their numbers because right. no child left behind. They got to get right. their numbers up. Blah blah blah. This would be a win 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 for all right. those teachers that are out there that have to get the numbers up. Right. This will help you get your numbers Absolutely. up. Absolutely. And so for anybody in, in administration and any principals and then any anybody within the school district we have to get on this this right. is an absolute no-brainer if you ask me right. i can't believe i use no-brainer with a brain addict guy <laughs> but you know this is come on this is just silly right it is and that's what i'm saying and the funny thing is it's it's really interesting i do this thing uh where i uh when i do my show i give people 10 items mm-hmm. and i uh Say okay, how many can you remember? And you know, the average person gets about four or five, right? Yeah. And then at the end of the show, I I give them ten items, but I teach them during the show a fun way to memorize things. Sure. And so then they average like nine or ten. And so what's interesting to me is that the first time when you know in the audience, I always invite parents to all the shows I do, and the very first time I do it is everyone's getting four or five, or a few people get six, and sometimes there's one mom or dad at the back that that gets ten before I even teach how. Mm-hmm. And Jennifer. Now 95% of the time, I'll always go up to the person after, and I'll talk to them, and they'll be foreign. And mm. I'll say, wow, that's so cool. You go, that's how we learn in our country. And, mm. you know, and it's like people wonder why we spend the most money and are behind everyone. That's really the main reason that I found from, you know, I've taught, I've been to Japan and Spain and uh, Canada and Mexico and, and taught, taught in schools there. This is why we are behind because we are so worried about just giving the kids the information but not telling them how, how to, to memorize, memorize it. it. Right, or yeah. how to focus in school. And it's like it's, it's unbelievable because it's like teaching kids baseball, okay, here's a bat and ball, just hit play. No, you teach them how to play. Mm-hmm. You're expecting the kids to learn, but you never teach them how to learn. You, they just count on their natural ability. Right. The parents are so wonderful, they just, but they don't know what to do. And right. so they, they want to help their kid. But so let's let's put it on the schools, and it doesn't it won't cost the schools, you know, anything or any time, and it just becomes so simple. Right. And so th- that's why I'm saying it gets frustrating in that respect. But I know, like I said, from Superhuman, we've heard, you know, from 2020, I heard from a ton of corporations, and I thought the best thing to do would be private. But now I'm thinking. Go I public. just want to help all the kids. I right. really did. I was because I didn't want to go into corporate America and, and you know do things and travel around. I was I love to you know find a way to help, mm-hmm. but now I realize I help so many kids, but it might have been separating instead of unifying. Yeah, unifying everyone. And the memorizing can also be for like comprehension and reading, not just math. Right. Absolutely. It's, I mean, it's, I, like so I said, anyone just, listening, right. just because Mike is a math genius, the the skills are translatable right. in all things. Absolutely. I, like I, everyone does things differently. I'm a mnemonic guy, but I teach all the different ways to do things. Mm-hmm. Like when I was. Uh, you know, whatever, 10 years old, we had to memorize the uh, 13 uh, colonies. Sure. So I mean, everyone's trying to memorize it. So, you know, so and I how did you do it? What was uh, your trick? George and Mary were on the verge of cutting a deal. He received three new roadmaps. She got two cars and a pen. George, Georgia, Mary, Maryland, Verge, Virginia, Cutting, Connecticut, Deal, Delaware. He received three new. New York, New Jersey, New Hampshire, Road, Rhode Island, Maps, Massachusetts. She got two cars, North Carolina, South Carolina, and a pen, Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania. Yeah, ah, and so that's, but that's what I'm saying. Two cars and a pen. Everyone gets them mixed up. Is yeah. Connecticut, is Vermont, what it is. And, you know, I just remember that sense. But everything, periodic tables, they can't, I do it for presidents. Everything I ever memorized. My son at Subway is corporation. He wants cheese, onions, ranch dressing, and pickles. You know, I mean, corp. <laughs> right, right, corp. Right, yeah. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. And so that, that's, that's how it is. And, mm-hmm. But people never 
do it, and so they don't know how. Mm-hmm. And so my son is one of those those kids that he does it and he learned. And so whenever he takes a test, the other kids will come to him and say, okay, how do you memorize this? Yeah. And so they take his way and they, they all memorize it. But once he leaves and goes to U of I and they, they're, they're in trouble. They're you know frozen, what I mean? And yeah. that, that's what I'm saying. And so I want every kid to learn how to do this because it's so easy to do. The mm-hmm. first time you do it, it's impossible. The second time it's less impossible. The tenth time it's easy. See, yeah, that's exactly it's, it. It's, right. Just Absolutely. keep practicing. And, yeah. Oh, well, awesome, Mike. I am so grateful we got to have this conversation I and especially it. that you're super human <laughs> and um, that others can benefit from this and they'll reach out to you so right. be prepared to be inundated because it I will happen so. right and anytime you want I, you know i just i just want every kid every parent that has a kid that they're losing hope or thinking what can i do just do this go to you know uh, mikebeister.com and click on te- teachable genius if you want to know you know everything about what i'm what i'm planning to do mm-hmm. or go on mikebeisterkids.com if you want to watch the videos of the kids i work with and i promise you I mean, this is heartfelt I'm going to change your kid's life if mm-hmm. you let me, and it won't cost any, you know, them anything. B-Y-S-T-E-R <laughs> is how you spell Beister. M-I-K-E is how you spell Mike. I, my parents didn't give me a cool way to spell Oh, Mike. come on. <laughs> yes, they did. Now, I mean, Jennifer Fur, as my mom plagued me with because all the other Jennifers were so normal, and let's just make it exotic and make everybody think I don't know how to spell my name. I have Mike Envy, so there you right, have it. Absolutely. Thanks for being spiritual. Thanks for being on the show. MikeBeisterKids.com, MikeBeister.com, and Brainetics.com. Just three of the many ways you can reach Mike. Google him, and you will have a very fun several hours <laughs> absorbing some of his uh, information. And reach out to him to come to your school so that we can change kids' lives and help The greater good, which is what Mike does. Thank you. Thanks for being here. Thank you, Jennifer. Uh, Always a pleasure. Always. I'm Jennifer Weigel. Stay spiritual, damn it. And always catch up with me at jenweigel.com. 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 Jenweigel.com.